talking about rebranding and, and the importance of branding, now the conversation of people wanting to be full-time content creators and creative entrepreneurs have been coming up more and more and more. I think now when you ask kids, yo, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yo, I want to be a content creator. You know, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be these things. Now, of course, the branding side is one of the skills of being that. But what are the other skills that is needed to become a full-time content creator slash creative entrepreneur? And I was watching a live stream from Roberto Blake. And somebody had made a comment saying that, yo, to do pranks or certain videos, it doesn't take much talent or skills. And when I say this man politely went off, I don't know if politely, but he didn't curse, really. Um, this is what he said about some of the skills that you need to be a full-time creator. And I want us to come back and talk about it in the full scope of you know, as we talked about it last week, from a entrepreneurship type vibe, what is the skills that you're going to need on both sides to really go full time? So this is what Roberto said. In terms of playing hide and seek and pranking people, there still has to be video editing, recording, gimbal operating work, um, understanding of lighting, understanding of video editing, understanding of storytelling, crafting a thumbnail, that's graphic design and Photoshop. People get paid a living for that. You still have to do some scripted version and variant of these things. You still have to do logistics. You still have to do planning. If you think it's easy, why are you not making $100,000 a year doing it? If it requires no skill, think about it like this. And this is my message to anybody who thinks YouTube content creation and social media is easy. If you are not making $100,000 a year doing what you're doing, and you think content creation, live streaming, pranks, video games, reaction, talking head. If you think it's so easy and you're not making $100,000 a, a year, you are a jack <laughs> for not quitting your job tomorrow, going all in in content creation and making $100,000 a year if it's so damn easy. Thanks. <laughs> now, <laughs> you, you, you could tell he's mad and hopefully uh, Eddie plays some, I don't know, aggressive instrumentals with that but um mm -hmm. moose I, he, he said a lot he said a lot from the creative side but i would ask you three four skills three four skills that um people need to consider to like mastering or at, at least acquiring when it comes to mm -hmm. going full-time as a content creator slash creative entrepreneur yeah, for sure. And, I, and, and uh, the three I'll give here really take a little bit of each bucket, right? Some creative, some business, or some, uh, you know, a little bit of both, if you will. So I would say the first one, and this is probably more of a business side, but it does require, uh, again, a creative element to it. I had to say is product development, mm. right? And you can think of product development or service base, however, which way, you still have to put together some form of sequence for customers and clients to be able to interact with your business, especially if you aim to turn this into something full-time, right? Even if it's part-time, nothing is a business if there's no transactions. And so most people are going to transact with a product that they can buy, something that they can use, a, surface, a service that is convenient to them. So we might think that's easy because we see so-and-so has this course out or this training or this class or this merch. You don't know that until you step in for yourself and say, all right, how is this in alignment with my brand, with my content, with my messaging, with the end goal that I'm trying to achieve for my community or my audience? So product development is not talked about a lot, but it's a very important skill set because that's one of the main things that's going to keep a brand or a business around for a long time, right? It's, it's really having good products. The second thing is, I gotta say, it's the storytelling, branding, marketing, right? To now be able to take the thing that you know it's good for this. It's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a really great bottle opener. It's a great water bottle, whatever it is, right? 
how can you now capture people's attention? Because for the most part, whatever product or service you come up with, and again, for the most part, there's something else out there that is similar to it. Why is it that the seven or eight billion people on the planet or however many customers you need to thrive, why should they pay attention to you? And this is where you're gonna realize the importance of storytelling, marketing, branding, all right, really having a skill set for being able to capture the essence of what your product is and uh, almost put a message out, not almost, but literally put a message out into the world that can capture people's attention so that they can eventually transact with that uh, product. But lastly, for any of that to happen, you have to know how to sell. Now, this right here, I know is the most uncomfortable piece for a lot of people, if not mostly all people. The selling piece is very uncomfortable. And I think it's because a lot of times our minds go to, oh no, sales reminds me of the annoying people who call my phone unwanted or uninvited, and they try to push me to buy something and I don't want to buy from them. I end up just hanging up on them, whatever the case may be. And it's like, that's not the only way to sell, but sales is definitely a necessary skill if you're going to run a successful brand or business online. I, I agree with that. And I think I'll, I'll add... Uh, one main one is communication, right? Um, I know Moose spoke about the storytelling, but I think understanding how to speak to your audience, understanding that there are certain trigger words, there are certain tones, uh, whether you are from a, uh, a written standpoint or a, a verbal and video standpoint, the communication to your audience is important, and I'm not talking about just from a voice-wise of whether you're sounding super energetic or monotone or anything like that, but I mean, yeah, do you know how to raise their spirits up based off certain things that you're saying? You know, how to, how to calm it down, how to make them feel safe, how to convert. This is all through uh, communication, and so that's that's one of the things you stole one of mine, which is branding. But that's cool. I'm I'm with that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm with that. Um, but on, on top of that, I would one of the things I also say from skill standpoint is leadership. Full time creators and creative on, entrepreneurs are going to turn leaders by default. You're going to have to delegate, whether it's to a contractor on Upwork and Fiverr and those types of things, or your own personal team assistant, you're going to have to learn some type of leadership. Also, from a standpoint of you are leading your audience to a certain direction. So leadership is a very important skill to really uh, pay attention to, read upon, try to master that, right? Right. And it's an ongoing thing, especially uh, if you come from just a creative world of like, it's just me and my creation. It's me and my video. It's me and my art. It's me and my words and, and whatever your gift may be from a creative standpoint. Um, it's now going to be bigger than you. And so leadership is going to be very, very crucial. And then um, an uh, a skill that doesn't get talked about too much is the, the skill of fun. Still have fun. Okay. Uh, just because we're now turning this more into a full time situation. And normally we think about it like, okay, once money's involved, once we put people in place, like it's now a job, right? There still has to be a level of fun and passion that you have for for even when before you thought about turning into a full time you just loved doing what you were doing you thought it was a great idea you thought you could do this full time so that same kind of energy like people say keep the same energy it should that should not go away now yes we can get consumed with the how do we stay consistent how do we create the work ethic how do we stay uh, top of our game. And so the fun side starts to kind of like leave a little bit, but it's going to be your job, one of the skills that you got to have to keep it fun. Because once you keep it fun, those times that it dips, those times that it becomes really bad, 
you're okay with that for the most part because it does not feel like a job. So those are, those are my three on uh, some of the skills. I, mean, I love like, that. I feel like we switched uh, we switched we roles on this. We definitely one. did. Yeah. We definitely. Did. I was like, I would not <laughs> going to say no teamwork, but right. hey, we make. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, if you are thinking about, or if you are a full time content creator, creative entrepreneur, uh, these are some of the skills that you should be writing down and kind of seeing, yo, what level from a one to ten am I in? And how can I better improve that? So I will say that. And that is it for the blueprint. But uh, I got a really good, really, really good this or that, which totally disregards the blueprint section. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, before anything, of course, uh, let's, let's get the sponsor of this or that. Uh, ready, which is the flight assessment. And you can find the flight assessment on flightassessment.com. And you could discover your personal superpower and learn how to use your superpower to become a master communicator, strengthen all your relationships, and develop the self-awareness you need to fulfill your highest potential on flightassessment.com. Get it. It's a game changer. You hear us talk about it every week. However, I was watching. Shout out to uh, Mandy and shout out to David Chans. Uh, I was watching their recent interview and because I love Mandy. Uh, she's such a great human being and hilarious. But she brought up something about you can't necessarily teach success. Right? And then, of course, in that same La Russell interview, he mentioned something to the point where you can't really duplicate the mind of a brand. So my question, and I'll let you guys hear it and so you can understand where this is coming from. Like, ever since COVID, definitely not, it didn't start in COVID, but it definitely enhanced in, in COVID and the pandemic situation where we're seeing, yo, here's the blueprint to this. Buy this course because this is going to give you the blueprint and create all this success. This, if you follow this, you're going to go to the next level. And my question is, is the blueprint statement theory, however you want to go with the quote unquote blueprint, is it fake? Are we just saying it's the blueprint, right? But we really can't teach the blueprint of certain people's success because we're not those people. Just watch where this is coming from because it's it, it blew my mind. Like, I really started thinking, like, yo, this is, this may be true. So hold on. I necessarily won't come out and create a, I can maybe create a master course telling you how to start a podcast. I'll never go and, and, and sell a course where I can tell people how to be as, as successful as me. Your content isn't the same. You sat here and said you can't even watch because it would affect your relationship or how you view things. I have people who literally are like, you saved my life. You saved my marriage. You saved like my relationship, you help me open up and, and be more comfortable with the things I really want to do. And I can't teach somebody how to be me. It, what this is, is really a result of a, just doing it every single day. It's not much more complex than that. You know, beyond the work, of course, there's a mind behind it, but that can't be replicated. So it's nothing that you could really give a tip on because no one can think like you but in terms of the blueprint is the, it's the work. A lot of people who don't make it today is just because they don't want to do the work. So, he, he, here's my thing, right? Because I'm, and I, shout out to B. Simone. I was watching the uh, Neo and B. Simone interview too, right? And they were talking about like, you know, well, how do you, you know, how did you become this successful? And he's like, when you start thinking about it, and I know I get frustrated with hearing about 
work hard, consistent, this, that, and the third, right? These typical cliche things. But is that the only thing you really can tell people? Because the real sauce of their success, they can't necessarily teach. So there is an element of like how La Russell said, where it is, you know, work ethic and work hard. And some people don't want to even do that. And so, you know, without the key foundation of this particular blueprint, you're not going to get anywhere. But as you continue to do those foundations of consistency and work hard and everything, you're going to find your own style, your own way of getting to the next level because there still needs that extra push. So I'm listening to these interviews and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of people who are frauds now because they're selling mm -hmm. a dream. They're selling the work hard. They're selling the be consistent. They're selling the, you know, do this exactly and you will become like me. And then I haven't really heard results that match what the person has really done. Has there been some level of success? Yes. Mm. Right. But are we, are we defining these, uh, these blueprints of that? If you follow this, at least you'll be able to do something. Because I think the messaging of here's the blueprint to be successful to do this is is a fraud. Like I went into my community was like, these are going to be the tools to help you. Right. But there still needs to be a level of you to do it. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely yeah. want your your take on it, because it, I was I was like, damn, Mandy, you're so. You're so right. Like you can't, and, and it, it was so funny because it was like, Dave was like, yo, so teach me. I can't, you're not me. So mm. what, are, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying to your people, but for me, I can't teach you how to help other people uh, fix their marriages. I can't teach you how to impact certain people's lives that they're now crying. That's something you can't teach. Huh. That's real. That's real. You know what? I think off the, off the bat, I got to talk about just the importance of messaging, right? Mm -hmm. When with what, what, what we're talking about here, this really is, I don't think it's a personal issue. Like I don't think anyone is online intentionally attempting to be a fraud. Do they exist? Absolutely. Do people intend to do it? I think some people end up in messy situations just because they haven't mastered marketing and messaging and how a simple choice of words can put you in the green or completely in the red and way out of pocket where you're hated by people and you have no idea why. Because your messaging needs to be on par with the thing that you're delivering on. I have to attest to what you said too about you literally tell your community, and I know this because a lot of times when I sat in on your trainings, one of the core concepts or one of the points in the equation is you. So, and, and, and for those of you who've been listening to the podcast or uh, even some of the lives, you know that there's a, a three or four step process and one of those steps is you. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I got to say, even with me, I always say everything is going to be based on context. Mm -hmm. Nothing that I share is obsolete. I mean, it's not going to override everything because there's a lot of things that depend on the context of the situation. It, there's Anyway, I don't want to make it about me right now. But I will say this. Uh, the, the other thing that came to mind is supply and demand. Yeah. You know, and that's a universal law. You can't, I, I, like if we were to put out something to say, we're going to teach you how to get, uh, I don't know, 100,000 downloads on your podcast. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is available to everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, based on supply and demand, and I don't know what the, how, what, how many podcasts the average person listens to, but at some point, that number, like you can't actually fulfill that promise because there's going to no longer be enough people on the planet to give every single person their 100,000 downloads. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
that's a, that's a fundamental universal law that we know within the world and more specifically within the business world that as more people become available to fulfill one specific thing, the need for it or the demand for it is going to decrease. So I got to say that, and I'm, I know I'm approaching it from a slightly different angle because I'm, I'm just thinking of the overall possibility of it, but the personal touch, I got to say it's, uh, it's the messaging. I agree. I just, it just hearing these things almost like, and it, it it's one of the main reasons why I had struggled of creating like courses, right? And I still don't. I'm still not big on courses. Like I'm like, here's the program, here's the experience, and here are the certain things that are in this toolbox that will help you, right? Um, it it. To, to sit here and have and give people the expectation of if you follow this right here, word by word, line by line, you are going to be success. You will get the 10,000 followers, the 20,000, the 100,000. And it's like, I can't guarantee that. I can't guarantee that because your content, like how Mandy said, your content is different. Your wording is different. You're, the way you are about is different. Just like how she said, everything she said was true. To like, there is a, there is a foundation. There is a best practices, but these are best practices based off a, a, a summary of like average, you know, people. You could be something super extraordinary. You could surpass that. Or you can just, it may just take extra time. Like, why are we not putting timing into this? Like, True. just because you follow these particular steps in, in your timing, it may not be your time, your true time to be as successful as the, the course, the program, the coaching has said to be. That's why, like, for me, it's like, it's, it's hard to to go with that messaging, which is a marketing kind of vibe. And and I get it. I'm I'm not mad at people like, yo, I've done this. I've done seven figures, eight figures, and and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, shout out to you. But some people will back it and say, so you can reach the same results. And I think that's a lie. I think that's a lot, but that's just, that's it's just, strange. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, there's a, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. I think, I think definitely you, you, you hit it on the head when you talked about it gets, it becomes a slippery slope when people start making promises to produce similar outcomes. You know, you, you can use that as a credibility statement and say, Hey, I earned seven figures. And as a result, I am now qualified to speak on the ingredients of a seven figure business. Absolutely. By all means, no one can question you. Mm -hmm. But the minute you say, I'm now going to show you how to turn your business into a seven figure. Slippery slope, by child. Right. right? right. Because now, now it becomes more of a different promise. And so it's funny because when I spent time on Wall Street, there was always this beef between the salespeople and the customer support team, what they call customer success really over there. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the salespeople would say whatever they needed to say to get the sale. But guess who had to carry the burden of telling the customer that, uh, no, we don't do that. And I apologize for what Bill on the sales floor said, because that's not mm. a part of our product. Mm. <laughs> customer success who has to fulfill it is like, yo, Bill was tripping. Like Sam was just trying to get a sale. And right. so Sam said whatever he or she had to say just to get the sale, but customer success is responsible for, fulfill, for fulfilling that promise. And so I, I, I'm, I literally started, and I think that, that's still probably one of the main reasons why I don't really take part in any major programs is because of that. I, I don't want to ever give anyone the idea or have them to like, wrongfully misunderstand that this is how it is for everybody. It's like, right. yo, there's so many unique ingredients that go into it.
Do I believe everyone can be successful? Absolutely, without a doubt, without a stretch of the imagination. I totally believe it. There's a lot of evidence in the world and even in my own experience that says so. But the unique ingredients that goes into it, there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of pieces. Facts. Listen, people, let us know uh, what you think. Is blueprints uh, fake, fraud, or no, they're, they're legit blueprints, blah, 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 blah. Whatever your debate is. I'm here for it. Um, shout out to Mandy. Shout out to LaRussell, uh, Corey B, all that whole, all, all stuff.